Hey, 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 welcome everybody. Thank you for joining. Rob, Andrea, <clears throat> thanks for joining over on Periscope. How is everybody doing tonight? Why, yes. <clears throat> what did he say to you? I don't even know what he said. I missed it. <laughs> Egg drops being awfully, uh, awfully nice tonight. Thanks for all your invites and follows and shares. I do appreciate that. All right, guys. So I am Jason Wallace. I am a believer and follower of Jesus Christ. I am a prayer warrior, an intercessor, a Bible reader, a devoted husband and father. I'm a child of God. I'm a new creation in Christ. I am a saint. I am <clears throat> a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Welcome, Princess Diana. Welcome, Andrea. Welcome, Mom. Uh, who else we got here? Sue, thanks for joining. Uh, where was I? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And I am a very proud member of the Jesus Did It family. So, guys, after the broadcast, if you don't want to mind, go take a look at the Jesus Did It website, www.jesusdidit.org, and uh, you can see all those affirmations plus many, many, many more are there on the download sheet right where the red arrow is. When you click on that link, it'll allow you to download it. You can print it out and uh, put it in your Bible, and you can read it every day. Um, also, uh, there's the Scripture Thought of the Day, and then uh, there's some Jesus Did It swag there if you want to buy a shirt or, or a cup or a mug or whatever it is. Um, some cool stuff there. And then right in the middle is the official Jesus Did It broadcasters. Guys, take a look at those guys. Click on the links. It'll take you right to their Periscope um, um, links. Um, also, uh, if you guys are on Busker, look for these people as well on Busker. There's a few of them that are on there um, that also go on Busker. And guys, uh, and also down below those ones are the ones that we like to watch, like like um, like uh, Pastor. Uh, who do we got there? Tommy Norman, and we've got um, uh, Cynthia Bazin and Laura Royer and. And Pastor Greenbeard and, and Larissa and, and Pam Smart and, and Set Free Recovery Coach and uh, Bible News Radio, Pastor Cindy, <clears throat> Chris Rossetti, all great, great, great broadcasters. And uh, we just ask that you uh, take a look at the website. Welcome, M uh, M A W uh, War 2. Thank you for joining on your first day. Yep, yep, yep. All right, guys. This is a very, very nice night. I'm liking this part of the story. Here we go. Samson and Delilah tonight. One day, Samson went to Gaza, where he saw a prostitute. He went in, went, he went in and spent the night with her. The people of Gaza were told, Samson is here. So they surrounded the place, and they lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made no more. Uh, they yeah, right. They made no move during the night, saying, "At dawn we will kill him." But Samson lay there only until mid middle of the night. Then he got up and took hold of the doors of the city of the city gate, together with the two posts, and tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them. He lifted them to his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Sometime later, he fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name is Delilah. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, See if you can lure him into showing you his secret of his great strength, and how we can overpower him uh, so we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of us will give you 1,100 yeah, 1100 shekels of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Tell me your secret of your great strength, and how you can be tied up and be subdued. Samson answered her, If anyone ties me up with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, it'll become as weak as... And, or I'll become as weak as any other man. Then the rulers of the Philistines brought, uh, brought her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried, and she tied and she tied him, sorry, and she tied him with them. 
With the men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the bowstrings as easily as the piece of string snaps when it comes close to the flame. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Then Delilah said to Samson, You have made a fool of me. You have lied to me. Come now, tell me how you can be tied. He said, If anyone ties me securely with new ropes that have never been used, I'll, I'll come as weak as any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him with them. Then the men hidden in the room, and she called and she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the ropes off his arms as if they were threads. Delilah then said to the Samson, All this time you have been making a fool of me and lying to me. Tell me how you can be tied. He replied, If you weave seven braids of my head, into the fabric on the loom and tighten it with a pin i'll become as weak as any other man so while so while he was sleeping delilah took the seven braids of, of his head wove them into the fabric and tightened it with a pin again she called him samson Sam, samson the philistines are upon you he woke from his sleep and pulled up the pin and the loom with the fabric then she said to him, How can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? This is the third time that you have made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. <coughs> With such nagging, <clears throat> she prodded him day after day until he was sick, sick to death of it. So he told her everything. <clears throat> no razor has ever been used on my head, he said, because, uh, yeah, because I have been a Nazarene dedicated to God from my mother's womb. If my head were to be shaved, my strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as any other man. When Delilah saw, <coughs> sorry, when Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent word to the rulers of the Philistines, Come back once more, he has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hands. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair, and so began to subdue him and his strength left him. Then she called Samson, uh, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He woke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Then the Philistines seized him, gouged his eyes, and took him down to Gaza, binding him in bronze shackles. Uh, and they and they set him to a grinding grain in prison. But the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. Now the death of Samson. Now the rulers of the Philistines assembled to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their god, who uh, who and to celebrate, saying, "Our God has delivered Samson." Sorry, Samson, our enemy, into your hands. When the people saw him, they praised their God, saying, O oh God has delivered our enemy, our God has delivered our enemy into our hands, the one who laid waste our land and multiplied our slain. While they were in the high spirits, they shouted, Bring out Samson to entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison, and he performed for them. When they, stood, when they stood him among the pillars, Samson said to the servant who held his hand, Put me where I can feel the pillars that support the temple, so that I might lean against them. Now the temple was crowded with men and women, 
all the rulers of the Philistines were there. And on the roof were about 3,000 uh, 3, men and women watching Samson perform. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, strengthen me just once more, and let me, and, and let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. The Samson re then Samson reached toward the two central pillars on which the temple stood, bracing himself against them, his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other. Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. Then he pushed, he pushed with all his might, and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. Thus he killed many more uh, when he died than while he, while he lived. The brother, th then his brothers and his father, whole family, uh, went down to get him. They brought him back and buried him between Zorah and Eshtol in a tomb of Manoah, his father. He had led Israel twenty years. Whew. All right, that's reading for tonight. <laughs> Short and sweet. Not that's a long one, but it's a good story, right? It's a good story. It really is. Samson was kind of a meathead with a temper. Yeah, but you know what? He really um. Uh, you know, yeah, you're right. <laughs> There's no other explaining it. That's a pretty good way of saying it, right? Um, definitely. All right, so what do we got going on here? I missed, I must have missed. I was looking down, guys. What's going on? Was God okay with killing 3,000 men and children? Hmm, that's a really good question. Was God okay with it? Well, Jason has a temper. Yeah, I do. You caught me. So we've got a lot of people in your sight. Uh, Clotastic, who do we have? We have uh, Maria's in the house, lovely brown girl. Welcome, welcome. Bunch of people in here tonight. Guys, thanks for joining. We got se we got seven here. Brother Seven is in here. Awesome. Hey, hey, hey. I am fine, guys. Yep. 21, 22. I know, it's an amazing amount of numbers. That's all good. He was trolling me during the reading. Oh, okay. 22. Oh, my. I quit. All right. So, guys, every night we read from the Our Daily Bread. The Our Daily Bread is free publication. You can get it from odb.org, or you can check and see. You might be able to get it at your church. So, uh, definitely take a look at that. Um, oh, yeah. This is the best part of this. I, I like this part. This part's okay. I like reading the Bible. I, you know, we got to read the Bible because that's what I said I was going to do. But I really enjoy reading the um, the devotionals. Like, Really, a lot of times, everything kind of lines up. <clears throat> All right, so for Friday, August 4th, whew, and we're just under the wire. For Friday, August 4th, Training for Life is the title. And this is written by Leslie Cole. Cole. My training for a long-distance race was going badly, and the latest run was particularly disappointing. I walked. I walked half the time, and even had to sit down at one point. It felt like I had failed a mini test. Then I remembered that uh, that that this was the whole point in training. It was not a test to pass, nor was it nor was there a grade I had to achieve. Rather, it was something I simply had to go through again and again to improve my endurance. Perhaps you feel bad about your about a trial you are facing. God allows us to undergo these times of testing to toughen our spiritual muscles and endurance. He teaches us to rely on Him and purifies us to be holy so that we may become more like Christ. I know this one's reaching out to a couple people tonight. I know that for sure. No wonder, no wonder the psalmist could praise God for refining the Israelites through fire and water as they suffered in slavery and exile. God not only preserved them and brought them to a place of great abundance, but also purified them in the process. 
as we go through testing, we can rely on God for strength and perseverance. He is refining us through our toughest moments. Amen. The prayer, the prayer says, Lord, I know that you will allow me to go through trials so that I may be so that I, so that I will be strengthened and purified. Teach me to keep relying on you for your strength and 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 or for your strength to endure. And the um, uh, the footnote says faith faith testing times can be faith strengthening times. Amen. You struggle with prayer. I struggle with prayer too. But we got we got to just uh, focus in on it. We do it right. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Today's reading was from Psalms chapter sixty six verses eighteen through twelve. I'm sorry, 8, eight through 12. Ugh. You can tell us the end of the week. I'm tired. <laughs> uh, and the key verse is Psalm chapter 66, verse 10. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. Amen. So that's a good reading for tonight. Good reading, good reading. I like it, good reading. All right, anybody new come in here? Did we miss any comments? Known as Sanctification. That's good. You remember that song? You walk 15,000 miles. Stop making it storm, Jason. You're making your book. Taking your book right hand. Oh, stop. You're so funny. So funny. Spirit-led sanctification and how it can be more Christ-like formation. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. All right, guys. So today, all right, you know, we've been doing all week, all week. We've been, um, and I and I posted in the Jesus Did It uh, Facebook uh, group um, the link to the book, and all week we've been reading uh, from the God at the Center book. And it's this habits for spiritual growth. As you know, we're growing ourselves, right? We're learning how to strengthen ourselves a little bit more because we're going to work on trying to, uh, to teach ourselves how to be more bold and how to speak um, uh, about our faith, right? You take an up. You can have it, buddy. I'll, I'll just send it to you. Give me your address. I'll send it to you. Um, <laughs> you don't got to take it. I'll give it to you if you want it. Or you can go to the website and just download it yourself. Um, so, uh, this is chapter four. All right. Now this is where things start getting all right. So we've already gone through, you know, uh, we've already gone through talking with God in prayer. We've already gone through reading God's book. We've already uh, read through cultivating dependence on God. Hey, Shell, thanks for joining. And, um, uh, and so now we're going to be talking about chapter four, which is practicing obedience to God. This is experiencing God's forgiveness. This, some people have some heart problems with this, so we want to make sure we listen to this one pretty well. All right. The first step in forming a habit of obedience to God is experiencing His forgiveness. The Bible teaches that confession is a prerequisite to God's forgiveness, whether for salvation or daily fellowship. This confession involves repentance and when necessary, restitution. Confession without, uh, without repentance constitutes fraud. In Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13, we read, Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Confession sometimes involves restitution. Usually, this is, this is the forgotten aspect of confession. Uh, our sin, wait, wait, yeah. but if our sin is, uh, but if our sin is deprived, someone for, or someone of something, uh, that is, ugh, man, my words are not working so good tonight, I'm so sorry. Let me reread that. Let's start it back again. But if our sin, uh, but if our sin deprives someone of something that was rightfully theirs, whether it's goods or money or an honest amount of work, we must not only apologize for the offended person, 
but we also should seek to repay them, repay him as soon as possible. The beauty of Scripture is that is that it's good news that God freely forgives those who properly confess their sins. Manasseh was one of the most wicked men to serve as king of Judah. He overturned Hezekiah's uh, reform, yeah, Hezekiah's reforms, and served false gods with more zeal than than the nations of God had destroyed. But being captured by the Assyrians, Manasseh greatly humbled himself before the Lord, and God forgave him. So Manasseh built a pagan a pagan altar in the Lord's temple, practiced witchcraft, and even sacrificed his own children. What? That's so crazy. So um, if God could forgive such a wicked king who humbled himself, surely he will forgive us when we truly confess our sins and repent. Confession is humbling. But if we confess our sins, he, ha he is faithful and he and just, and he will forgive us for our sins and purify us from our unrighteousness. Learn this verse and use it often. It's First John chapter, um, First John chapter one verse nine. Here's another good verse to add to your scripture memorization list: Their sins and lawlessness or lawless acts, I will remember no more. How remarkable is it that the omniscient, omniscient God promises not only to forgive our sins but also to forget them forever. So God fences our fences for freedom. When I was growing up in Argentina, God's uh, God's commandments, especially the 10 commandments, were taught in such a legalistic way that I avoided any serious study of them until after I had finished my graduate level of biblical studies in the United States. I discovered at the time how little I had been written about them. Our sinful nature causes us to corrupt, uh, corrupt that of, or, yeah, corrupt that which is beautiful. We turn God's moral law, which the apostle Paul called holy, righteous, and good, into oppressive legalism. Perhaps that's why some some uh, some will frown. At, at the mere mention of the Ten Commandments. So legalism em emphasizes keeping the letter of the law while missing the spirit of the law. Legalism always leads to pride and rule keeping and turns us away from the heart of God, who simply wants us to love him and to consider his needs uh, of, of others, or consider the needs of others, sorry. They remind me of my grandmother, who had a fit if I ever wanted to play outside on Sundays. One person admits, thinking of the commandments reminds me of my father, who refused to read the Sunday newspaper, says, uh, says another. The words of God should not, uh, should not elicit such reactions. Let's return to God's moral law and shake off the chains of uh, of sincere but sinful human beings who have twisted the beauty of God's commandments. So it says here, much of Deuteronomy consists of Moses recalling all that the Lord had done for his people, including the instructions that were a guide to them into peace and prosperity if they obeyed them. Deuteronomy chapter 5 uh, restates the Ten Commandments and concludes with a promise of blessing. If they, if they adhere to God's law. When the Lord gave Israel ten, the Ten Commandments, he, he says, in effect, Listen, O Israel, I brought you out of bondage, not to create another bondage for you, but to liberate you. And if you remain within the boundaries I am about to give you, then you will be free. You will have plenty of room to maneuver. So enjoy all that I have given you. God's statement includes a warning. In effect, it says, as long as you stay within the fence, you will be free. But once you try to stretch the boundaries and jump over the fence, you will be in bondage once again. 
I am convinced this is the way God intends us to view all of his commandments. The Apostle John reminds us his commandments are not burdensome. Burden, burdensome. Uh, they, are, they are life. Now, obviously, living up to the Ten Commandments doesn't give us salvation. But we are all sinners in need of a Savior. Both the Bible and experience teaches us that uh, teaches us we couldn't keep the Ten Commandments perfectly, even if we tried. The purpose of God's commandments is to lay a foundation for us on which to build a life of love, freedom, and obedience. Spend some time meditating on the commandments from God. Start with the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. As you study and pray, answer these questions. First, what does each commandment reveal about the character of God? Second, what does each commandment liberate me from? Third, how does each commandment protect me? Finally, if love is fulfillment of the law, then what does each commandment reveal about love? I believe once you answer these four questions, you will look, you will look at the at the commandments of God with a new perspective. As the psalmist says, "Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I will find delight." Ooh, good reading for tonight. So, yeah. So, uh, repenting, confessing, repenting, all that stuff is going to start helping to be able to build up, right? You have to forgive, right? You definitely have to forgive yourself, you know, and you, and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get rid of it all. You can't just, you can't just, you know, say, oh, you know, I, I'm not going to do that no more without actually working through it, right? You know, if, there, if there's somebody else involved that you've hurt, like, like, you know, I'll give you an example. You know, I, I was in uh, the one of the things that that uh, that was my turnaround point was I had recognized that I was a very bitter person and uh, very angry, and people did not want to be around me. They didn't want to work with me. You know, that people just I didn't have a lot of friends, and it's just because of my attitude and the way I acted. And um, I even had a point where I made someone quit their job because of me. And, um, you know, I, uh, I repented of that. You know, I, I, I repented of that and I, you know, I confessed that sin and said, you know what, I'm no more. I can't do this no more. It was all part of my turnaround. It took a little bit of time. But, um, but you know what I did was after I confessed that sin, you know, of being that bitter person, um, I went and I asked for forgiveness from that person. I still haven't gotten that forgiveness, but I can I can clearly say that I tried, right, to um to to wholly get rid of that you know um, off of me, you know I I've still got some stuff I'm working on, but but I think we all are, and I, and I think we just have to strive each day to be a little bit just a little bit a little bit better, you know, and once we do that, you know that that's that's where God's God's looking at it, right? It says right there, it says right there. Their, their sins and lawless acts, I will remember no more. So he's going to forget it, right? You know? Oh, he is. <laughs> I do believe that for to be the truth. I've had so many people tell me that. And um, I'm just being obedient. I'm showing up. I'm here. I'm just, I'm being, I'm, I'm being, uh, you know, I'm just being a mouthpiece for somebody else's words. You know? And then, and then I fill in my testimony where needed. You know? And, um, because these aren't my words, right? These are these are words that are that are by somebody else, but because they 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 hit they really well written, and it hits home. A lot of the stuff hits home for me, you know. And I, I feel that if I'm reading it right, I want to share it with everybody else as well. And uh, as long as uh, as long as you know, as long as there's someone here to listen to it, why not? You know. And I do appreciate you guys coming on my broadcast, and we we're learning a little bit more. You know, um, there are people. That especially on Periscope and stuff like that, that are just not, I don't want to be judging, I don't, I don't want to be like calling people out, but there's just not, they're not being good, they're not being a, 
a really a true and faithful, um, you know, uh, uh, servant of God. They're not being that that disciple of Jesus Christ, the way that He commanded us to be. You know, they're 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 out for their own their own um, agendas. You know, calling themselves with titles and stuff, and and um, and asking people for their money. You know, it's not what it's about. You shouldn't have to ask people for money. You know, if uh, really, you should be asking people that if they have extra money, they should be really giving it to, to, to the poor. They should be giving it to the people. You know, it says in the Bible that we need to be taking care of the, the widows and, and the poor, right? First off, widows and the poor. So uh, why not go help out, you know, some somebody. Give, give, the, give some of your money to a, a, a shelter, right? That's right, and, and we're gonna win, win exactly win hearts for Christ, and um and and that's where where we need to be. Steve, how are you doing? Steve, I haven't seen you in a while, man. What's up, brother? Um, I've been I've been on your broadcast like I popped in a couple times here and there. I've just been tired. You're up. You're up late. You're you're a late. You're a late guy. <laughs> Not so much. That's good. Terry, thanks for coming back. So yeah, we just read it. We just read that section there, and uh and um. And that, that's good stuff. And um, guys, now we're, let's get into our our prayer time. So we talked about our truth tonight, and so we're we're working we're working on ourselves to get closer to knowing who we are, right? And and, and helping our faith. I hear you there. I hear you there. I, I do the same myself. Uh, so what we're doing is we're working on getting ourselves to, uh, stronger, right? So we can answer those bold questions when someone confronts you and says, you know. These simple questions. Yeah, we have, we have, we have like precious faith, brother. That's right. So, um, you know, there, there's questions that are going to be coming at you, like these ones. And think about these. You know, I'm not going to expect you guys to answer these, but think about it. Someone will walk up to you and say, "Can you tell me a few reasons why your uh, your belief in God is real?" Hmm. Um, you know what? Uh, what makes what makes uh, what makes your your God real? Um, the one that the one that's very interesting is: can you define can you define faith? Oh, I got super hearts. No way. Oh, that's from Steve. Steve, thanks, man. That's awesome. I do appreciate that. Um, okay, I gotta buy some more super hearts. I gotta start handing some out for some people. Um, but yeah, you know, and um, and there's some 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 questions there that are really, really get there, you know. You know, why do I have to believe in a god? And uh, how come Christianity is the right faith to believe instead of Islam or something like that? You know, so there's some questions that we're gonna start working through uh, over the next couple, you know, next couple of weeks. Um, I'm, I'm building up I'm building up myself because I want to know I want to understand this because um, I'm feeling challenged lately with not 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 in my faith I know who my my Lord is I know who I know who Jesus is I know who my God is um, we feel challenged sometimes like how, how can I how can I describe that to someone who does not believe right because if you're in most of the people that are in here, you're believers, right? Yeah, because Jesus is real. But we need a better answer than just that he's real, you know. Um, and 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 because we're gonna be we're gonna be the ones that are are, are gonna be challenged, right? They're gonna be challenging us, and they are gonna be persecuting us, and we gotta have the right answers, right? It's already happening. It's already happening. If you go on on Periscope or you go on on some of these other platforms, you're gonna see a lot of people that are um, that are just uh, you know they have no faith at all, and um, and they're they're you know and they're profoundly speaking against it, you know against God and against Christianity, even against any God or any faith, you know. They just, they, they have no faith at all. And I feel so bad for those people because I know what Jesus Christ has done in my life. And I know what, what he's doing. And, um, you know, without him, I, I don't think, 
Yeah, I don't think I could follow any other any other faith. Because, um, you know, I've checked them all, all of them out. If you think I haven't, you know, I've read parts of the Quran. I've read some things about that. You know, I've checked out some other faiths and stuff like that. I even got to the point where, where I didn't even care to go to church. I didn't even care what was going on. I didn't have no relationship. So, you know, what, what do they call that, right? I've had conversations about the universe and spiritual reality uh, being undeniable with atheists. Yeah, there's just so much. I couldn't imagine not having Jesus. Now. I know, I know that, and 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 that's that's what it is, right? You know, uh, we're okay. We're all good. We are all good. Um, it is depressing to think that you know about him not being in our lives. You know, we um. before such a bitter person, right? Just was not a good person. And now I, I just I, I think that um I think my, my heart has changed, right? It's it's softened up and I, I'm actually listening and being obedient. And I need to know more. I need to I need to do more. The more you know about science, the more you realize there must be a God. And that's that's absolutely it. Some of the research I've been doing lately um, I, I told the guys about this uh, video that they should go look at uh, yesterday. Um, go take a look at the, the video. It's called The Atheist Delusion. All right. Can I see your prayer face, please? I, I really don't have a prayer face. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I don't exactly know what that means. But if you do have a prayer request, you can put it in the broadcast, in the, in the stream, and we'll pray for you. Um, Try to show them God. It's incompatible. It's not incompatible with science. Oh no, it's everything there, right? Right, random thing is called. I'm gonna have to talk to you, Jesus. No, I can't say I have. Oh yeah, ancient Genesis is like my is like my uh, you know that's my second second that's my second place I go to for answers. <laughs> First is the Bible. Second is that, and then uh, and then. Some other, 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 uh, yeah. I do, I, I really do enjoy uh, Answers in Genesis. It has lots of answers. Lots of answers. Makes things clear. Put it on, you will love it. Well, I can't really put it on right now because I have um, broadcasts going on other platforms and uh, especially YouTube, and I cannot play copyrighted music. Um,. They just have faith in other stuff. They don't like to be challenged. So the problem is, and as the Bible, the Bible says that if someone doesn't, if someone is, and don't, don't get me wrong. These are just my words, my paraphrasing of the of the verses. No, don't, uh, you know, don't don't quote me. Go look it up yourself and, and and qualify what I'm saying, right? So yeah, they like to win their cases. That's all the ego. Exactly. It's all pride. Um, it's all pride. They have to be the winners. Um, about everything, and 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 no, no non-physical being could ever be the winner, right? So you know when um when when you look at that stuff, it, it's it's difficult, you know. And so they got to understand if a person does not have um if a person does not have the Holy Spirit either around them or or in them, right, or through them, uh, throwing word at them is not the answer. Because they won't receive it, they won't understand it, they will reject it. They'll push you away and they'll push it away. That's like when an atheist comes onto my broadcast and says, "I'm an atheist. You're gonna kick me out?" Well, no, you know, and I'm not gonna sit there and beat you over the head with a Bible either, right? So, I'm just gonna ignore that. You guys know what to do with the with those comments that don't seem right. Um, they just don't like religion and have the wrong idea of God. That's exactly it. But so what you gotta do is you gotta start showing love towards them, right? And show them that. And you know, don't don't go. And that's that's actually kind of funny because every time we read this stuff, it always comes. It lines right up. You know, we we don't we don't want to be. Uh, Driving while listening, 
You better not be tapping on that screen, man, or I'm gonna I'm gonna have words with you. <laughs> Unless your wife is tapping on the screen, then it's a different story. <laughs> How are you doing, Chris Rossetti? Thank you for joining. Uh, uh, no one is really an atheist. They're just uh, they're just an owl. That is the truth. The Bible says that um, that the spirit is inside of you. Your your love for God is inside of you. It's built inside of you when you know knitted together when you were when you were in your mother's womb. That that is uh, that is true. That is there. The problem is is that people suppress it. They get themselves. They they get too much of themselves and too much wrapped into uh, either either the nature of things, right? So they're always they're always um, they're always uh, praising or, or or worshiping the creation, right? Uh, instead of the creator. And then we have you know the science scientific people that that they're always trying to you know because they can't see God you know they, they can't they, and, and they can't feel God that they you know and they can't taste it they you know, can't use all their five senses to 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 understand what God is so to them it's not provable right um, and so and those people don't like to feel conflicted when dealing with the possibility that God exists. I'm telling you, who who are who are you? I I don't think I I don't think I'm following you. I'll have to wait for another comment to come up so I can click on it. But um, but uh, yeah, if you could put up emoji, I want to follow you because I, I like what you're talking. Um, I don't know if you're broadcast or not, but uh, I like to keep track of people. There you go. It's your first time watching me. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining. And um follow me and uh, join along. We uh, we do this every night. We talk, we read the Bible, we do all kinds of stuff. You don't broadcast yet? That's good. Yeah, prepare for yourself if you're going to broadcast, definitely. Um, but we um, you follow me already. That's good. Thank you. And uh, and so th this is what we this is what we do every night. We, we come here, we talk, we read the Bible, we go over devotional, and we, you know, we pray for people and we do stuff either. And uh, yeah, Liz doesn't broadcast either, but uh, but Liz is a very like a, a, not everybody can not everybody's a broadcaster, right? There are people that that are that are going to be people that are our our viewers and, and and followers, and I appreciate those guys too because if we're all broadcasting, who's watching us? You know what I mean? So it's actually we do need people to be able to watch and listen, and uh, people who who contribute very well, and uh, that's what I do encourage is people to contribute. So. Some go to bed early and replay the next day. Yep, absolutely. I, I don't, there's all day long. I see re, re, rebroadcasts all day long. Oh, Leviticus chapter twenty, verse thirteen. Yeah, we read that probably about a month ago. I know. I, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Way too shy. Yeah, I was too. But I don't know what made me. I mean, I was so scared the first time. Even, even, even sometimes, even now, every once in a while, I get a little bit. You know. What do you say about it? I say it's an Old Testament. That's what I say it is. I've seen atheist delusion any other day. It made me cry. Absolutely, you know, and that's the boldness that that I want to that, that I want to be able to to be able to speak about my God, right? So, um, so yeah, God says you shall not kill. That's right. You shall not kill other humans. Uh huh. <laughs> Um, I watch it during the week and when I got to work the next day. Yeah. It's, um, it's a really, oh, you watch me during the week and then when you get to work the next day. I got it. Explain it though. I'm pretty sure it's self explanatory. <laughs> Thou shalt not kill. That's pretty much self explanatory. Don't kill other people. <laughs> I don't think I need to explain that one. Who said that? There was some guy named Peter Ortiz, 150. He threw a verse out there that said Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. And he says, what do you say about that? And he said, and then he wrote, God says you shall not kill. And then he says to explain it though. Hey, how's it going, you Ulysses? Thanks for joining. So what do you think about eating meat? Hmm, that's an interesting question. I... I personally eat meat, but, uh, you yeah, know, that's, uh, something that's, you know, that's what I do. 
Some people don't eat meat, and I got no problem with that either. There's some people that believe that we should not, we should be, that's right, it is a trick question, right? We've been here before, right? <laughs> I know it's allowed, but is it ideal? <laughs> some people, I don't know, I like, I like, listen, <laughs> listen. I never met a chicken wing I didn't like, and, um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, barbecued pork, forget it. Forget it. <laughs> um, but is it ideal? You know what? Probably not. It's probably not ideal. Um, some people believe that, oh, I love bacon. There is no joke about that. Um, the, um, my, my waistline tells me I, I do very well with that. Um, so some people believe that in Genesis, right? Do you believe in Santa Claus? Well, yeah, why not? <laughs> Got You know, we're, I, I live in North America. This is something that we believe in, at least for our kids, right? I mean, I don't personally, but uh, for my kids, I do. But my kids also understand that Christmas is not about uh, some jolly man that comes and, 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 and stinks in your house and, and gives you gifts. You know, <laughs> my kids know that that day is about Jesus Christ, his birth. Huh. What denomination are you? I am none. I don't follow a denomination. I am a non-denominational Christian. I really want to say that differently. I'm a non-denominational follower of Jesus Christ, disciple of Jesus Christ. Um, and, you know, and I don't have any problem with any denominations, right? You know, if you're Catholic, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're, uh, whatever, you know, Protestant, you know, whatever Protestant, you know, branch you think you're, you know, you line up with, it's fine. How do I know what you believe in? How do I know what you believe then? Hmm. That's a good question. Stick around. You'll figure it out. I, I, I speak about Jesus Christ. He's my Lord and my Savior. He's the one that came here. And, that's right. I'm a Bible-based Christian. Exactly. Exactly. I don't get myself wrapped up into symbolisms or or uh, procedures or... Yes, I believe in the Holy Trinity. Absolutely. I believe in a virgin birth. Yeah. I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior who uh, died on the cross for my sins and rose again three days later. We don't need a denomination to believe that, exactly. But that's pretty much the premise of just about every single uh, Christian denomination. Just about. Some of them get a little twisted with it, but <laughs> but that's their, you know, that's their deal. If you line up with that, I'm not going to say nothing about it. I know all I know is the truth. The truth is written in the Bible. The words are in the Bible. And that is the truth. So, do you believe in predestination? Someone else asked me that too. I don't know where I believe in that. I, I, some, somewhere I haven't had time to think about. You know what? Uh, at the end of the day, I know that. Uh, well, let's go look that up. Let's go figure out what that means. Okay. Well, it looks like it's a movie. <laughs> it's very interesting. It's a movie. Predestination in theology is the doctrine that all events will be willed by God, usually with a reference to an eventual fate. Oh, look at that. See, I'm learning something new. I don't believe in it. God gave me choices. I got free will. All right, so uh, so what does it say here? An eventual fate uh, of the individual soul. Explanations of predestination often seek to address the the paradox of free will, whereby God's omniscience uh, seems incompatible with human free will. In usage, the predestination can be regarded in the form of religious determination and usually predetermination. So let's go and see what, what uh, types of pre... let's see. Protestantism. Let's see what my Protestant friends say. Comparison between the Protestants Ooh, this is some cool stuff. Classical views. Uh, unconditional election to salvation only with... Man, it's too much words. Here's what it is. Jesus Christ died for my sins. And, uh, and, and he rose again three days later, right? 
So I don't know what it is exactly. Calvinism. Yeah, I don't know exactly where I line up. But here's what it is. I read the Bible. The Bible tells me, right? The Bible tells me that that uh, that uh, for God so loved the world, He sent His only begotten Son, right, to take away my sins. Yeah, and He rose again three days later. And it's too much. Too wrapped up. Too much. Too many words. Too many big words that confuse a lot of people. Let's keep it simple, right? Yep, equals man-made. Yep, denomination equals man-made. Exactly. There's too many words. Just too many big words, you know, all, all these different things. It really, it, it, it has no meaning. Because at the end of the day, when we come down to it, you know, if you are following the rules, right, you're following the law, you know, if you're following what Jesus tells you to do, the two greatest commandments, right, what more do I need to be worried about? When my time comes, my time comes, right? Rules, rituals, yep, social controls. Exactly. All those extra words are just basically put together by a... They believe that God chooses who he wants to save and sends people to hell that he chooses. Well, I'll tell you right now. Um, that's not what the book says, but... And, and you know what? And, and you can sit there and speculate all you want. At the end of the day, Pharaoh is as an example. Uh, as an example, yeah. Pharaoh as an example. Uh... Yeah, I, I guess I could agree with that one, Hannah. Um, it's our choice, and um, whether we follow and we and we we turn away from our sin, and we we truly are, you know, in in communication with Him, you know. I don't know. It it just seems like too much. Uh, too much to even think about. You believe that we have to do things to be saved. No, the only thing you have to do to be saved is believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior. That's it. It's a very simple thing. Yep. It's that simple. Just believe. Believe. They use a verse in Romans about potter and clay uh, to get that, to get their ba by basis. Yeah. Yeah. And then see, I, I don't get all wrapped up in that stuff. It's just too much. It is way too much. At the end of the day, you and I. And everybody else who either believes or does not believe in, in, in God, okay? All right. We don't know exactly, right? And all we can do is go by what the Bible says. You don't know what's going to happen. I mean, he's changed his mind a couple times, right? <laughs> you know, but he doesn't change, right? So do people go to hell? That's a good question. It says in the Bible they do. It says if they don't, uh, if yep, you can't, yep, don't buy it. No visa, no time. Yep, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't pay your way into heaven, and you can't, uh, and you can't uh, do good works to get yourself into heaven. Well, you know, I'm a good guy. I I do this and I do that and I help out this and I help out that. That's all good stuff. <clears throat> he wants you to do that, but at the end of the day, all those acts are not going to get there if you're not clean inside. If you haven't fixed your issues inside of you <clears throat> and become a really true believer in Jesus Christ, you throw all those works out the window. There's no, they're, they're not worthy. You know, all that stuff, it means nothing. <clears throat> and it, it's horrible to say, I, I know. And, and, you know, and all I can say is that I, I'm saying that because that's what the Bible says, right? Uh, I was going to steal his book earlier. Yeah, see, it's all Craig's fault. He got me all fired up. <laughs> Without Jesus, you have nothing, exactly. Hell is full of good intention. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of people think, well, if we're going to burn in the lake of fire, does that mean our soul is gone forever, or do we kind of hang around for forever, and then maybe we get dip our toes in it? Or or there's some people that believe that, uh, that once you get thrown into the lake of fire, your soul is incinerated forever, and, uh, and it, it's gone, poof, you, you're, you're done. Um, there's some people that believe that, uh, that you might have a chance, right? That, um, you know, you, you're, you'll have a chance to be able to, um, uh, to, to plead your, your will to God at some pearly gate or something. Um, you know, uh, yeah, no, do it now. <laughs> do you think is a sin issue? I think that, um, and I heard this tonight, and this really made a lot of sense to me. It went well. It went well with me. Um, so, I don't, I don't hate 
people who are gay, right? Um, I don't hate people. I don't hate people anyways. I really don't hate anybody. Not anymore. I've, I've gotten rid of that from me completely. Um, yeah. Only God knows. He loves us and wants us because we are his children. Exactly. So, um, yes, gay, being gay, that, that act, the act of it is, is a sin. And, but I can't judge upon that. It's not my, my judgment. All I can say is that the Bible says that homosexuality is a sin. And, uh, and what, what do we do with that? You know what, if you're a saved Christian, but yet you call yourself gay, you know, it, it's not, it's not, um, you know, it, you're, you're, you're labeling yourself with something that you're not, right? If you're a child of God, you're a child of God, whether you're gay or not. And, um, you just have a sin, right? That you need to work through. It's not, not something I can help you with. It's not something I'm going to sit there and condemn you with. If you want to live your life in sin, that, that's your problem. You know, I'll be here if you want to cry on my shoulder and if you want me to help you um, know who Jesus Christ is and how to t help you. If you need help turning away from that. You know, I've never been through that, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Jesus was born and raised and still is a Catholic. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's abortion murder. Absolutely. When something has a heartbeat, that is only, uh, you know, <laughs> absolutely. Something has a heartbeat at only a couple days. Yes, it, it's a murder. It's absolute murder. Or whatever term you want to call it. You're, you're killing a human being, is what is in my eyes. No matter what. It could be hours old, it doesn't matter. It's still a living, living organism, right? It's still a living person. It still has the heart beating. You know, so... I'm <laughs> at the corner. Exactly. Craig, you know that you know that Liz is Catholic, right? <laughs> it is sad. In South Korea, doctors start count embryos birth start count embryos birth. Hmm. Day one. See? It's very interesting. Uh, does God choose me or do I choose God? Um, both. Oh, you're Catholic too. I didn't know that. That's good to know. Yeah, I, I used to be, used to be Catholic. Um, but, uh, Kim, Kim probably knows, um, being from the Buffalo area. Um, you know, our, our church, our Catholic churches in our area went through, um, a transition through basically the whole early 2000s, right? It was right, right through 2000, uh, to right up until like, 2008, they went through this transition of uh, faith and grace, they called it, transition through faith and grace. And basically it was that they were running out of money and they couldn't keep the buildings open. And they didn't have priests and they didn't have people to be able to even even uh, serve the mass. So, um, so what they did was they closed up the churches. And um, that was actually where that started sending me into a tailspin away from God. Um, that's that's one of the points that drove me away uh, was because I was taken out of my home church, which, which was basically closed. Even though we fought and we had the Vatican letter that said to keep it open, the diocese said, no, okay, fine, we'll keep it open, but you can only have it for three, three masses a year. And uh, at that point, I was just a pew sitter anyways. I didn't have a relationship with Christ. I had no idea really who he was, right? If your choice doesn't it make God less powerful. Um, these are good questions. I like these questions. These are good questions. Very good questions. Lots of good questions tonight. If I don't answer your question tonight, trust me, I'm going to copy them down and we're going to figure them out. Um, some Some interesting statements, you know. And, um, and we'll, we'll talk about it. I'll talk about it tomorrow. Even, you know, we'll just, I'll, I'll go figure out what the answer should be, you know, because I don't know. I have, I have pastors, I have people that help me there. Why is the lighting so bad tonight? Is it really bad? Or are you just trolling? I can make it brighter. I can make it brighter there. See my beautiful green eyes. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, our friend Cal is left. I tell you, oh, at your house it is. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, gotta get this thing. It's called a light, man. It usually helps. <laughs> yes, nice green eyes. Thank you. Um, God is all powerful. He's like a judge. He doesn't force you to put you in jail. That's right. Listen, the, the being on Earth is not like you're in a fishbowl, right? It's not some some big guy in the sky sitting there staring at you, right? Um, oh, he may have a hernia. Oh, that's not good. Brand new grandson, Kim. Can I have his first name, Kim, by any chance? Yes, Hannah, we'll get him too. Hannah Mike Smith. For salvation. Riker. That's a pretty cool name. He's going to be the cool kid in class, I guarantee you. Because he's got the cool name. <laughs> dropping stuff. Sorry, I need a I needed a drink like a half an hour ago. <clears throat> but I pushed through it. Um Alright. So where'd that guy go? He's gonna see my prayer face now. Plastic cup sighting exactly. I don't even know if it's I don't even think uh, yeah I think it's Tupperware. I enjoy researching about subjects. That's why I do my free time. So if you really, if you're interested in something, I want you to look up epistemology. Check that out. Epistemology. You will be uh, amazed. Take a look at some of the videos of how some atheists um, tear down a believer's faith, almost to the point of they don't even know where they are. Um, or who they are, or who they believe in. Can you spell them for us? Epistemology? I can't spell it. I'll, I'll look it up real quick. Epistemology. E -P yeah. <clears throat> there it is. Yes. Yep. E P I S E P I S T O M O L O G Y. Epistemology. The theory of knowledge, especially with regard to its methods and validity and scope. Epistemology is an investigation of what distinguishes justified belief from opinion. And some people get really good at it. Glasses sighting. Yeah, we need to have a firm foundation. What was that? We need to have a firm foundation, but having faith doesn't uh, deprive us from being intelligent or seeking. Not exactly. And you should always be challenging everything, right? Challenge it. I dare you to. And, that, and that's what I'm doing with, with, with learning about the stuff that we're going to be learning about. You know, how to be bold in our faith. How to be able to, to speak to someone about Jesus Christ. And how to, you know, how to be able to successfully be able to speak about it, you know, because a lot of people just don't get it right. Uh, Lord, He will have to take the time off next week for Him. Sorry, did I miss something? Lord, He will have to take the time off the next week for Him. Not sure what you're asking about, Gaul Octavian. So we can defend our beliefs with confidence in more than in more than one way. Exactly, you know, because you can say, "Oh, I got him. he's in my heart," but, but, uh, but someone's gonna say, "Well, you know, that's just a feeling you have, right?" The Lord will give him up for me to take care of him. I'm not sure what you're asking about. Did I miss a comment there, Gull? I, I think this is the first time I saw you pop in today, so I might have missed your request. So let's uh, let's let's get into some prayer right now. Uh, I'm tired tonight. Uh, though a busk said spam can instead of spy can. <laughs> That's funny. We need to grapple with the questions in order of our own. In order to our own faith. Yep. 
but we have to be able to um, we have to be able to boldly stand stand up and 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 you know defend that right. The Lord will have a the Lord will have a question forever. Got some really interesting just random comments. All right, guys. So uh, let's let's um uh, Kim's grandson with a hernia, possible hernia. Lord Heavenly Father, we lift up Riker today. That's Kim's grandson, Lord. We know that he is uh um is gonna be suffering with uh, possibly a hernia, Lord. We just uh we lift him up to you, and we just we, we command healing in the hernia, you know, and fix that hernia, Lord. Let uh let all the muscles and all the things that uh, that are there, all the linings and all those things be repaired and and be corrected in Jesus' mighty name. We ask uh, we ask that there be no pain and no suffering for that for that young grandson either. But we just ask that you uh, that you uh, just protect him and give him uh, peace and comfort and let him know that uh, that you are there, you are there with him, Lord, and you're holding his hand. We ask this in your mighty Son's name. Or we uh, we lift up. Um, Hannah's friend, Mike Smith, Lord, uh, we know that uh, he is um, he's in need of some salvation, Lord, and we just ask that you whisper into his ear, give him a sighting, give him a vision, give him a dream that that uh, that points him to wanting to know more about you, Lord. Lord, just let him let him feel your presence, Lord, and let uh, let him speak those words. Just uh, as soon as he feels that he speaks those words, that uh, that he believes in you, Lord, let the Holy Spirit go in and, and change his life forever, Lord. We ask this in your mighty, mighty Son's name. Amen. Amen. The Lord is the man of the God, God, Lord of the Lord. Man, you got some... I don't, I don't understand, so... Well, we got lots of stuff going on. Amen, amen, absolutely. Yep. Thank you for healing that little grandbaby. Absolutely. It's not easy to defend ourselves nowadays. Always ask God for wisdom. Absolutely. So if you're in our Facebook group, in the Jesus Did It Facebook group, oh boy, here's an Ezekiel, Ezekiel person again Want me to talk about nasty stuff. I looked it up. <laughs> I looked it up, you nasty person. <laughs> um, you better not meddle with those tarot or economic stuff. That's right. Oh yeah, you stay away from those tarot cards, man, all that stuff. You stay way far away from that. It's, it's the Bible, best Bible verse. You know? I guess so. If you're uh, if you're looking for things, right? Did you see the small fine print in the horoscope? Yeah. Craig, you're 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 being troublesome tonight, guys. Um. I don't even try to defend myself. I know what I believe. That's all that matters. I know. I know. And, and that's good. And, and, and to be bold in, in your faith and to be able to show others, you know, is important. God wrote it. What's the problem? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. He's going to get the, he's going to get a beat down, right? <laughs> um, guys, take a look at Jesus did it.org. If you get a chance, um, Rick Costa has made a beautiful website for our group of people that broadcast under the Jesus Did It um, dot org um, uh, website. So take a look at that. There's a bunch of broadcasters. I do ask you guys to take a look at every other broadcaster and uh, know that we're paying, we're or we're playing, we're praying. Blah, my mouth is not working. We're praying for every single one of you. So just keep in mind, okay? Half the people that are in this room right now. Um, a lot of them are, um, are, um, I would have no interest in it anymore. I got tired of the world. I have no interest anymore. Well, we want you to keep, well, we want you to stick around here, right? And so just keep it, keep in mind that, uh, these people that are in this broadcast that, that, that are in, this, there's lots of people, even official broadcasters or, or people that are followers, right? I know that, I know that Desert Liz, I know that Desert Liz writes down every single one of these prayer requests. Because she usually ends up uh, having names and stuff for me when I can't read my my, my real bad handwriting. Um, so I know that she she pay she prays for people. Uh, she prays for people to come on this broadcast. Um, I pray for you guys. If you don't want to put your prayer request out there for the whole public to see, which is fine, send me an email. I'll pray for you. I had another person who comes on here regularly. You know, and uh, and uh, yeah, Liz is awesome. I, I really appreciate Liz. Um, and hello again. How are you doing? 
um, and just send me an email and I'll, I'll pray for you. I, I, you know, and if, and if you're, 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 if you're seeking salvation, if you're anything like that, you need some help, you know, you want, you're, you're, you're stumbling and you need to know, um, you know, you just want a Bible verse to kind of, kind of get you going, right? Well, that's good. I'm glad you're feeling better. Absolutely. Um, you know, um, I've had people ask me, like, listen, I'm, I'm kind of dry in my faith. I'm, I'm doing really good right now, actually. I, I'm, I'm, you know, we're on a good roll. <laughs> and it's still pretty early, so it's kind of good. Um, keeping you company, exactly. And, uh, exactly. And you know, uh, that's what we'll do. And, and, and so someone emailed me and said, you know, can you pray for me in this? I'm, and, and also, uh, you know, I'm just been kind of dry with the Lord. I'm not, not there, you know, I'm, I'm not reading the Bible. I'm not doing this. And so, um, so I'll send back a couple of verses to you, you know, and, and ones that line up with, with whatever you're feeling, right? Because th things, you know, there's nothing new in this world. Everything has happened has happened already. And, um, you know, it just looks a little different. And all we got to do is just uh, go to our guidebook, right? Use that Bible. And you know what? If you're struggling with it and you're, you're at a point where you're like, well, I got the Bible app and I read the Bible sometimes, every once in a while. But as soon as I get my phone, you know what? Put the Bible app away. <laughs> Put it away. Don't use it. Go get yourself your book. You know what it's going to do? It's going to take your hands off of that phone. And it's going to put your hands onto the word. And you're going to want to read it. Right? And yeah, you might have to, I wouldn't say force yourself, but you got to make yourself want to do it. You know, and uh, that's why I come on here every night. This is the only reason I came and started doing broadcasting. Was because I wanted to read the Bible more. Right? And then God told me, read the whole Bible. Right? But how do you begin to read it? That's a really good question. So, here's a good, good, way, good way to understand this. You don't read the Bible the way you do every any other book. You don't read it from front cover to back cover. Okay. Um, you have to have some foundation first, and we have to understand. You know, you have to understand a couple things. So the best way to read the Bible is to start off in John, the book of John. So the book of John explains who Jesus is, who or who he was, who is coming, right? Who the salvation is, right? And it goes through the teachings of him, right? And then we go through, you know, and you go, you read through Acts. So we go to John, we go to Acts. All right. And then, um, and then what you can do after that is, you know, then you can go back and you can read the other, the other three, um, gospels, you know, keep yourself in the new Testament for a little while, because, uh, you want to make sure that you understand who Jesus is and why he did what he did. And understand the teachings that he gave, because all that stuff is all, and you know, all the rest of the Bible, all the Old Testament, is there's a lot of stuff revisited, right? There's a lot of verses that have been brought back. Jesus spoke of many Old Testament verses, right? Gonna hit me with the word with a bad behavior sign. That's right. You keep it up, man. I'm gonna beat you with my Bible. I'm gonna beat you with the Bible. <laughs> I'm gonna beat you with it. Um. That's an interesting question. Why why doesn't the time stop like in the Bible? That's a really good question. We have a Bible. Thank you. We're all done. Yeah, start from John. And um, you know what? Reach out to me. Um, send me an email. Let me know where you're at. And uh, if you're stumbling on stuff, because I did too. Like the first time I started reading it, like I wasn't saved yet. So I was reading it, and I'm just like, man, these are just words, and I'm not understanding exactly what's going on. And then all of a sudden, you know, um, after after I felt like I was saved, and, and I really knew who Jesus Christ was. I, mean, I knew, I, I grew up, my background is, is this. I, I went to Catholic school. You know, I went to, went to a Catholic church, you know, uh, once, you know, every Sunday. I was just a pew sitter, though. I was not someone who had a relationship with Jesus. And, um, and, you know, I, I thought all these stuff in the Bible was just, uh, just stories to make you, to make you be a good person, you know, I didn't actually understand that, the, that the whole Bible is written to be a love story. It's, it's God's love story for us, right? Um, think about it. 
if you were if you were the only being and uh and you wanted someone to be in fellowship with wouldn't you want to be in someone you know fellowship with someone who's like you right so we're made in god's image and if we think about it sometimes god's image uh, wait a minute this is getting this is getting deep i might have to think about this for a second because it, and something just hit me and i'm just like wow does it really make sense sometimes us being in God's image makes us also think that we are gods ourselves, right? Because uh, because we're jealous of other things being in our lives more than what than what we want, right? And when things don't go our way, you know, we we tend to do that. That's back scope. Back scope for being. Oh, go back. Go to the back. Go to the back, man. So it's, yeah, some interesting things there. Voice was jumbled, bass was frozen, commas and hearts were working. I'm not sure what you're doing there. Seems okay for me. That's ego, exactly. And so it's ego and pride, and we let we let that get in the way. And so um, we need to just uh, we need to work work against that. So yeah, starting John. John will get you into a place where where uh, where you'll understand who Jesus is, and then, uh, like I said, go go to go to Acts because then you'll understand what the church is supposed to look like, right? You know, and then you can you can go you can go um, maybe follow some devotionals, right? That help you. Um, there's some really good devotionals on the app, on the uh, on the um, U version app. There's some good devotionals there that help you get there, right? So. I think Jesus is the best follow ever. All I've been doing the last couple of years is being let down by people. Listen, people will destroy you. People will hurt you. People will be, uh, they, you know, you think that they're gonna, they're gonna be, be the person that's gonna always be there for you. But every single person, and don't take this the wrong way. I, mean, I don't want to get it all skewed, right? But, but people will let you down. Right? God will never let you down. He's always there for you, always. All you have to do, <laughs> my evil powers are being felt. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, it's all you got to do is access it. You just got to be there. You got to be obedient and show up, right? Because we're human. Exactly. So, um, you know, if if we were perfect, we would be God. And uh, I wouldn't want that. That's a lot of stuff. I thought you were John Cardello. You were from a pitcher. Awesome. I have no idea who John Cardello, Cardello is, but thanks for uh, thanks for saying that. <laughs> yes. God. I'm sorry you feel that way, Tony. I really am. God has changed my life. Jesus, Jesus has uh, changed me so much. I used to have an attitude. And uh, about stuff like that, and uh, I'm glad that he's ch he's changed me, because uh, I couldn't be angry no more. I couldn't fight fight this fight the system or fight the people. I couldn't be angry for more anymore. I confused people and religion with God. I felt pressure to be a certain way and to do certain things. Those are pretty simple things. It's mellow. It's mellowed you out. It mellowed you out. Yeah, it did absolutely. I was a horrible person. People did not even want to work with me. Yep, stop the struggle and gave it to Jesus. Uh, what, what do I need to hold on to that for? Man, all, all that struggle and all that frustration, all the anger, everything else, all, all that stress, man, it made my hair go away. <laughs> I'm just joking. I lost hair losing my hair at 21. Maybe it was. Maybe that was the reason why I was losing my hair. So stressed out about things. You know? Why do you let other people control you? Just be you. Tell them to get lost. That's right. Oh, man. El Triquiro Rojo. I'm so sorry that you believe that. He's not dead, man. He's not dead at all. He's here. The struggling is what makes it so unbearable. Yeah. You gotta let that go. You just gotta let that go. 
It's difficult to tell your own family to get lost. Listen, I'll tell you right now. Um, I am like a black sheep in my family right now, I'll tell you that. Black sheep. Like, oh, you're one of those Christians now. You're you're a you're a Bible thumper. You're a you're a Jesus freak. You know. At least that's the way I feel. They never tell me that, but that sometimes that's just the way it feels, right? But uh, that's what happens when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of your heart. You know, I can't I can't deny that. If I did, I mean, I'd be denying God, and I certainly don't want to do that. <laughs> Go ride your tricks. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's good. I appreciate that show. Listen, my uh, I, and 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 people are seeing it, right? And um, it's just because they don't know. And I, I I'm 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 gonna be the light who's gonna shine, right? I'm, I'm gonna be the light that's gonna walk on that narrow path. That's gonna follow Jesus. I'm gonna let other people see me doing that. And they're gonna they're gonna see what what good is coming out of it, and um, and they're gonna want that too. And and I hope so. I hope that people see me and they think, wow, he was a really messed up dude. But and it happens, right? It happens. I have guys at work that have been working with me. Be like, you are a real bad person. But they would use you know vulgar language, you know. I want a Jesus emoji. I know, right? That would be awesome. A Jesus emoji would be cool. I got a tricycle for your picture. That's interesting. Absolutely. People fear what they don't know and what they don't understand. So that's why that's we got and, that, and that's where the boldness comes out. That's excuse me. That's where we need to start learning how to be that boldness. Hey Cynthia Joy, thanks for joining. You're on my heart right now. Um, I, I I feel your pain that you're you're suffering. Uh, I know that you've spoken in Rick's broadcast. Um, I feel your pain. I've never been in that quite that situation before, so I don't I don't know, but I can tell you that. Um, hey, Laura, thanks for joining. Uh, but I'll keep you in prayer because I know that you need it. In fact, I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna write you down real quick. Issues. Hey Russell, thank you for joining. Oh, I can tell it's almost it's gotta be 1 a.m. Rick Casa has checked out. <laughs> it's 1 a.m. Rick Casa has checked out. Samsung took away my cross emoji too. What? Did I say what? De jempe estuar su mano de poetra de poetia. Let me shake your hand from poet to poet. I was figuring that out. I was trying to trying to learn the Spanish myself, but uh, I got the translate button, so I'll use the translate button. It works pretty good. Oh, he's a troll. It's okay. Ooh, you know Spanish. I know a little bit of Spanish. I needed to know a little bit of Spanish to be able to go on to... Um, uh, I was an awful person, and was, oh, well, with my mind, I was a wrecked, manipulating, delusional, full of hate. Yeah, I know. Now I feel so much for others. Isn't that how I feel? it is, right? You, you see others that are in the same position that you were in before, and it hurts you? Like, you feel it? Like, it, it literally irks your soul, like, wrecks yourself, wrecks you. Um, <laughs> you're a troll, too. You know, and uh, it literally wrecks you when you see other people that are in the same position. Has anyone else watched it? Isn't it amazing, Russell? <laughs> it is an excellent movie. I will definitely say that. It hurts, it hurts so much seeing them suffer. Absolutely. You just can't do it. OC, TPO, Hello, Espanol, no response, and English, and Fresco. So. <laughs> huh. So I can speak to you in Spanish, and you answer me in English. That's fresh. <laughs> See. Si. 
<laughs> Diego Sueno, 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 you're sleepy. <laughs> Soft racist man. Oh, well, I, oh man, I can't hit translate on that one. I can tell you right now, I am not a racist man. Probably the furthest from a racist man. You should be a, a, a pastor. Yeah, I will work on it. You know, you look very happy. It's, it's admirable. Well, I gotta be, man. Why wouldn't I be happy? I got Jesus in my heart. He's changed me. Maybe be a happy person. Yeah, and those are all things that I was never before. I was never very calm and never good at talking at all. Like, and expressing my feelings and stuff like that. It wasn't until the Holy Spirit got a hold of my heart and just like shook me up. I want to be like you when I grow up. Listen, don't be like me. Be like Jesus. He was a more perfect example. It's all about him, man. Don't be like man. Man will disappoint you. Jesus is the only one who's a perfect, perfect example of what of what a true, a true, holy, sinless person looked like. And we we can never compare to that. We can try, but we can never compare to that. You know, try our hardest to be like Jesus every single day. Suffer from narcissism, depression, anxiety, paranoia, a lot. Yeah, there's some people gone through some stuff, man. Some stuff that I, I, I don't even know, you know. Oh, oh, I'm glad that he filled something. Whatever. Purgatory. That's an interesting place, isn't it? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, we can, uh, I guess it's kind of funny that I yelled at them. <laughs> they sure got quiet. <laughs> I know, right? Is that a tougher? I think so. I think it is. I'm trying to see it, but I got water in it. My water's got... Oh, no. It's, um... Sorry, my arm's in the way. Huh. It's that other brand from Walmart. What is this? what is that? Is it uh, Sterilite? Sterilite. People don't get my emotional sensitivity now. Listen, yeah, it's fakerware. Either way, it's fakerware. It's no, no good. It's no good. <laughs> it looks like Tupperware, but it's not. Uh, let's see. Jesus is everywhere. Is in. Is in this Paris? If Jesus is anywhere, then he's in this Paris. I don't even know what that, what you just said there. People don't get my emotional sensitivity now. I don't get my emotional sensitivity now. I don't understand it. Like, I just read something or I'll hear something and certain things will just trigger. I'll, I'll be sitting there crying. There's some freaky clouds rolling your way, just rolling over here. There were some freaky clouds all day today. It was amazing. Uh, people are desensitized by pain and sin. They are. The world. The world has gone and shown people that 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 sin is just uh, something to laugh at. Oh, look at that! Ha ha ha! Look at that guy. You know. You know he's doing this bad thing, and we'll just laugh at him because, you know, if I were to guide him and tell him he's doing something wrong. Well, that wouldn't be funny. You know? Eating and drinking out of a Tupperware is not healthy. BPA, they say. <laughs> don't have BPA. I don't know. I use paper plates. I can't afford plastic plates. <laughs> Just hope it didn't ruin my job by crying to the manager today. Listen. Listen, if somebody's hurting you, when you get knocked down low, Jesus is there to lift you up. He did it for me. Absolutely. I agree. Listen, if you if you if you truly have an issue at work, you know, if you you know, Cynthia, if there's truly an issue there and things aren't right, you really got you know, you really gotta bring attention to it. 
you know, it, it's, you should, no one should be able to control you. No one should be able to, to, to destroy you at work. And trust me, I know, because I've made people destroyed before, and I wasn't barely even their manager. Uh, why am I getting tired? I just don't know. <laughs> um... Accepting, accepting, accept everything or you're being politically incorrect. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have 27 people. That's amazing. I know. That's like a lot for tonight. It's like a lot. I'm almost thinking, I haven't even looked at the numbers yet. I got 428 viewers. Wow, that's awesome. Many possibilities. Interesting. You need to be able to, you need to be able to talk. Absolutely. You got to be able to use it. You know, 428 people visited. That's amazing, isn't it? It's also crazy, symptom-free. It's still crazy to me. That's good, that's good. Symptom-free. So you're symptom-free? Whoa, that's awesome. Eat a bowl of fruit daily, walk a mile a day, you won't get tired for long. You won't be tired for long. I'm interested. Just random words. Yeah, I, th I don't remember what the next step is. I think I gotta have like 700 viewers or plus to be able to get to the silver level. Um, being humble is not is not considered too sadly. It's a quality my friends have to, have to have. Absolutely, you gotta be humble. There's no no way, right? It's the first quality to have. You should have absolutely. For those those two brown gr oh, those two grown females need to be dealt with or they could lose me and they might uh, and they need me more exactly you know what and if that's the way it is if that's the way it is um absolutely there's 428 people that heard got heard, heard some word of god today it's awesome you know those people there you know it may, it may be maybe that's the direction that god's pointing to you you never know right um, if you tell, if I tell you the real truth, you'll probably, block, I don't block anybody. Unless you're being really, really vulgar. 750, I think, is for silver. You're right. Um, balls in their court. There you go. Let them deal with it. No problem. Listen, yeah, I love you too. Get some rest and, uh, you know, God's with you. He's absolutely with you. Those are just truthful. I just watched videos of atheist people who said they went to hell for a short period of time. I think I saw that one, saw a little bit of that one too. I get here. You were healed in your spine. That is awesome. Um, quite scary. <laughs> All right. We can't be persuaded to be saved. I'm so sorry. I don't need persuasion to be saved. I'm watching a mass instead of doing your Bible reading. Come on! Stop being rude, Craig. Not you, sir. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, you think it's real? Do you think what's real? <laughs> I'm sorry, Russell. Do I think what's real? Anybody that's lost. It's not persuasion. It's calling you. Calling you can't escape. Period. We're not persuading you. Free will is God's way. That's right. You can certainly press the X in the corner and leave if you want. I really don't. It doesn't matter to me if you're here or not. Uh, people going to hell and talking about it. Oh, yeah. Listen, if that's what they felt that they went to hell, man, uh, you know, you can't escape salvation. No, it's up to you. Okay, I'm just stating the facts. <laughs> when you're chosen. Good night, Lisa. I didn't even know you were in the room, Lisa. I'm so sorry. Get some sleep. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a nice night. Who's to say they didn't do? They didn't do. <laughs> I think we've got about three or four conversations going on here. It's very interesting. 
like my eyes are like going nuts because I'm like going up and down and trying to read. You had pain and you walked right, right away, right always. God said the preacher had a spine problem. Amen. Amen. Didn't know. Yeah. Wait a minute. Starting a little, starting to go a little fast here. Hey there, young chap. How are you doing? Than whom I predestined, I also foreknew. Lots of very confusing words. No man cometh unto the Father, lest the Spirit draw him. Very interesting words. Okay, how's your arm? Arm's killing you, man. Oh my goodness. Did it give you anything for the pain? Nick, Mr. Montague, thank you for joining. Victor, thank you for joining. What's up? We don't shim who chooses us. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what you're saying, buddy. It's pretty scary what they say. I know. Yeah. Oh, hey. You're going to heal Satan. Okay. We can heal. Let's heal Satan. <laughs> Goodness. Oh, boy. Goodness. Yes. Heal. Heal Satan. <laughs> Go away. We don't want you here no more. <laughs> we cast you away, demon. Come on. Monsieur or Signor Monte. I think it's Mon Monsieur. Monsieur, yes. Goodbye for tonight. Sleep tight. We'll see you later, Liz. Salvation is wonderful. Keep your prayer, please. One doctor appointment Monday and for scope I'm doing tomorrow on faithfulness. Awesome. Uh, you break the record, eleven thousand hearts. I'm, I'm break the re your own record. You're at fifty nine hundred hearts, and I, I don't know if you're gonna catch up to. <laughs> I don't know if you're gonna catch up to her. Uh, you're not gonna. I don't think you're gonna catch up to her. Um, who is that? I can't. My eyes are hurting. I'm so sorry. There's someone that has more than 14,000 hearts. I cannot believe it. 14,000 hearts. Yeah, we're going to pray for you. Um, Lord, Heavenly Father, we lift up uh, that dude is spiritually evil. I know, right? <laughs> I've got something going on. Mr. Potato Head. I love that one. That was good. Lord, Heavenly Father, we lift up our friend Lisa in prayer tonight. Lord, we know that she's got a doctor's appointment, Lord. To on Monday, let that let that doctor's appointment go well, Lord. And let her uh, let the doctor be in awe and wonder that uh, whatever the issues that maybe she she's there for have been healed in, in your mighty son's name. Lord, we also uh, pray pray over her broadcast tomorrow, Lord, that she's going to be speaking of faithfulness. Lord, let let your words be true coming out of her mouth, Lord, and let uh, let those that are that are in her broadcast. Uh, Listen and be, and be attentive and uh, and be able to accept the word of God uh, that that she is going to deliver tomorrow. Lord, we ask this in your mighty, mighty Son's name. Amen. Believe it. <laughs> All right, believe it. Great thick French novel. Great book. Ah, believe it. Bless you. Bless you. Yep. What was just mentioned spoke to me and that's my thoughts and my words. Interesting. Interesting. All right. You have a very nice night. I feel like gluttony is never talked about. What do you think about it? I feel that uh, I think we all fall for it every once in a while. Especially here in the United States. You know, when we come... Uh, I gotta eat because I gotta fill my belly rather than I gotta eat just enough to sustain. You know, Jesus went 40 days without food. And we complain when we go a couple hours. And, um, you know, the only thing we can't go without is, is water, right? We need water. 
I never saw it gone, but he was faithful to draw me. Well, that's good. I'm glad God drew you towards him. I'm hungry right now. I won't eat. Don't eat anything. Oh, I gotta start doing that for sure. Super life, your name is Boomerang. Got it. It's part of how food is processed. Don't eat anything after six. Really? Mm. Yeah, food has got, uh, causes the body to want more. Oh, absolutely. I agree with that. There's so many chemicals in there that, that just make you, yeah, need clean eating. Yep. Right there. Starts with this. Oops. <laughs> Starts with this. I don't, it just sprayed all over me. Everything got wet. <laughs> that was so funny. Um, I did not think it was going to explode. Uh, nope, that is um, similar. It's um, it's uh, kefir water soda. And so it's very um, carbonated. Oh, you had Ted's hot. Listen. Listen. You don't you drink herbal Tai Chi. Chai Chi, yeah herbal herbal chai every morning that's good now Ted's listen listen there's no getting around there you make kefir daily with milk I can't drink milk milk is uh milk is for cows that's the way I look at it milk is for cows I just can't drink it makes me makes me sick Talks like a Victorian gentleman from the 19th century. I know, right? It's got a very well, very well, very well written. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Else. <laughs> there you go. Now he's speaking like a, like an like a, an American. Except for the yeah, yeah. Brother was in from Colorado. Had to make buffalo food. Absolutely. Gotta go to Duff's, get the wings, you gotta go to Ted's to get the hot dog, you gotta go to Paula's to get the donuts. <laughs> you know, you gotta go, you know, gotta go over to a Charlie the Butcher, get some beef on whack. Uh, oh, Hannah, where are you from? Are you from the area? You're from Western New York? milk is to limit it <laughs> you're from everywhere uh, you can you can send <laughs> you can send me a direct message in the United Nations <laughs> that's what we call my work at one time we had so many different people working there it was amazing we have people from from uh, from Saudi Arabia there's some guys from Lebanon there's some guys from Syria some guys from the US some guy from uh, from Russia we had some other guy from from Italy, we had a Romanian guy. It's like the United Nations at my work. It's amazing. I'm a carnivore. <laughs> it was her first job. Me too. It was my first job in school. Interesting. Uh, diversity. Yep. Uh, diversity. I'll tell you next time. We you can send me a direct message on Twitter or an email. It's fine too. Um, but yeah, we uh, I, I live in the Western New York area, so um, it'd be really cool sometime to meet up with anybody who's in the area if you're ever around. You know, we'll go grab coffee or something and do a, a, a broadcast. Yeah, who knows? Um, but. Uh, it's good. It's good to be able to do community outside of outside of here, right? I'm a scavenging. <laughs> Does that mean you eat whatever is around? <clears throat> but yeah, the 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 kefir water soda 
Kiefer does a couple things. Like a homeless man, right? Yeah. Scavenge or <laughs> So Kiefer water is um it is a um what do you call that? Probiotic. <clears throat> so this is the made out of the, the water grains. Does prayer work? Yes, I do believe prayer works. And if you need prayer, I'll pray for you. That's good stuff. I love making this stuff. Like I use fruit juice and it literally makes it tastes like I I don't know. Like I make it with the one juice. It's cranberry, blackberry, um it's cranberry, blackberry, and blueberry. Oh man. Yeah, soda. Literally soda. I make soda. It's it's two ferment process. Take a look at it. Uh, look up. Uh, look it up on Wellness Mama. I'm so sorry. He's not my. Not my yep, CO2. Lots of it. That makes lots of it. My little brother was intrigued by Satanism. What could I do to get him off of this phase? Well, you could show him love, right? Wellness Mama. Yeah, go to Wellness Mama. Look up Kiefer Water Soda. Um, and if you are in the Western New York area, I will share with you a little container of of, uh, of kefir grains if you're interested. Um, yeah, but you don't want to be you don't want to be a wedge. What the problem is is that if you got someone who's who's in and this is we talked about this earlier that if someone's not receptive to 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 changing their belief, they're not going to. What you have to do is you have to speak to them. Now, if you're still in here, if you're still in here, who is your, what is your name? H. Wagner. Lord's Prayer and pray for the kid. We can do that, absolutely. But you can talk to them in a particular way, too. Um, that's Leon Sugarfoot, G-O-H-S, guitarist. Oh, welcome. I'm not sure what that is, but you're welcome. Um, so before you go, I can tell with you, I can tell you something. What type of things do you pray for? Whatever people need prayer for. And what they call an intercessor means that I'll pray for you no matter what it is that you want prayer for. As long as it is something that is you know, uh, genuine and not just uh, foolishness. Um, so this book here, Share Your Faith, okay? It's very broad. It's accessory prayer. It's like whatever you need to pray for, we'll pray for it. <laughs> That's what we do. Um, so Dare to Share, okay? It's a book. You might want to take a look at it. Um, yeah, you want to intercede in your brother's half, definitely. So we can pray for him, absolutely. We'll pray. Um, so is your name truly Leon? Your name's Leon? And Leon's left. But maybe Leon will come back. Because I was about ready to dig in this book. How do you know if it works? Because I've seen it happen so many times. I, I You know, to see someone on their deathbed awaken and be, and be fine the next day, Listen, that's got to be God. The results are true. All right? I pray for myself that, that, I, that I've changed myself around, that, that I'm being more faithful to God. And it happens. It's not a magic spell. It's power. It's authority. Exactly. Hey, listen, I'm starting to like you. <laughs> I, I was I was almost, almost thinking that you were a troll at first there, Super Life, but I'm starting to like you. Um... Your words are starting to shine through. You know, um, could have been science. Yeah, I doubt it was science. Uh, I doubt it was science. But, you know, it could have been the chemicals, the drugs, or whatever it was, right? It could have been. You know, but uh, that person left, so uh, I don't even know what the person's name was to pray for. He didn't say his brother's name, right? Let me double check. I don't think he said his brother's name. Just said his brother, his little brother. I don't even. 
Well, we're going to pray over that situation because I feel that that was a genuine question. Lord, Heavenly Father, we lift up Leon's brother tonight. Lord, we know that he has been uh, drawn into Satanism, into the darkness. Lord, we just, uh, we ask that, uh, we ask that you uh, re reach into reach into him. Say, Lord, just reach in and, and whisper in his ear and let him know that you are, you're there. Give him an awakening, Lord, a uh, visitation. Let, give him a dream that, that, that pulls him away from the, the darkness and the evilness and, and following such a, such a, horrible being that that only only wants uh wants death to us or we uh we, we speak that away from him or we we command that that spirit of of uh of evil away from that or away from that boy Lord, we ask this in your mighty mighty son's name we, we command that satanism away from him lord we ask this in your mighty son's name amen you're at the right place how in the world did you get here must be God's will. Many many prayers for close family members suffering with cancer are not heard. Well, that's interesting. So, that's interesting. So how can we, how can we how can we address that, right? So how can we say that? Well, God never fixed a a suffering cancer person, right? God didn't step in this time. Um, I don't know. Uh, to me, I wouldn't let a sickness um, that is of the world, right? Because your body, your flesh is not... You know, and He can fix you, right? He can. Right? And, 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 it, and it can be done. And, and maybe, maybe it's just belief, right? Twice in your family now. You know, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm still going through. I'm still learning a lot myself about 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 this. So um, when we speak of cancer, cancer is, is something, right? So some interesting things that I've read um, about before was that that um, the reason why the body gets cancer is because of other root problems, right? So there, there's. Um, he lost faith in seeing them die. I, I get it. Yeah, we're sorry that happened, but we can't control that. You know, we, we can't we can't control what happens with that part of it. We can request it, we can see you know, we can ask for healing, you know, we, we can command healing, but at the end of the day, <laughs> it's got a very poor diet diet. Um <clears throat> it may it may be, it may be there's some healthy people that have gotten it too. Um, sometimes it has to do with with other things, right? It has to do with stress. It has to do with so. What's the point of praying? The point of praying is, is that so you can lift that person up to God, so that he he can, you know, and you're gonna command healing in it, and you're going to uh, to ask him to put a protection around him, and bring a peace and an ease over you, and, and over over the person who's suffering. You know what? If, if I was dying from a, a you know, a terminal disease, I, you know, I, I wouldn't, for me now, I mean, yeah, it would be tough, right? It's going to be tough seeing that happen, but I know that, I know that I'm going to be, I'm going to be there, right? I'm going to be with Jesus. So no matter what happens, I'm good, you know, and, and it may not be here in this world. And, and for sometimes I tell you what, Sometimes it's difficult to be here in this world. It's very painful now Now that I have a different eyes, right? The ultimate place of peace and love is with, God, is with God. But it doesn't make it easy, right, for those who are still here. It, it gets it, you know. Some things just can't be explained why, why people are, are taken away from us too soon. You know, and, um, you know, flesh is flesh. It's going to, you know... It's gonna rot away no matter what, and no matter how we look at it, you know we we uh we never know when our hour is gonna be ended, right? When our last breath is gonna be, and um, I would much rather be happy and knowing that uh, that my place is right, me, my salvation is in with Jesus Christ. I know that I have a place uh, when I do leave this earth. And who knows what that's going to look like, you know? 
uh, on the on that day that when it comes that that the Lord comes back, we're you know, you never know. You might just wake up one day and be back into a place that's very similar to this. Prayer worked. Wouldn't there be no hospitals? That's a really interesting question. Those are flesh, dude. The flesh. You know what 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 can we do? Sinners entered the world. And I have a better answer for this. It's just my brain is hurting me right now. Sorry. It's just I'm getting very tired. I have a better answer for this. Um, it's just I don't I don't want to get it turned around differently. I so here's what I ask for you. I ask for you to um, to uh, follow me, and I will answer your question tomorrow. All right. Uh, and you put up with foreigners. Uh, Jack share before this. Um, Abe able to speak to you? I forbid you. J when foreigners myth mythalum mythalum. I have no idea what he's saying there. Better. <laughs> I can do this all night. Um. Uh. uh Jeek, all you all you sure or are you are you there? With our sadness. <sighs> you guys are funny. I love this. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Destined and God. Uh, I solve more of them. Broadcast Shui. <laughs> oh my god, honestly. Balak Shi, yeah. <laughs> okay, your mercy, God bless you. <laughs> he writes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Special who sent him other than you. Oh, he wasn't even doing good. He wasn't even doing good Arabic to speak. <laughs> Who sent him to call him other than you? <laughs> Nobody sent me nowhere. Two trolls after talking. I'm sorry. Did I? <laughs> that, is that a music guy? I'm sorry. Over my scope. Exactly. They're like. Talking in words to each other, but weren't really words. They were just kind of a. I don't know. I find it humorous that I can um, hit the translate button and translate them. So that's really cool. And he's like talking to someone who's not actually in the broadcast. This is really weird. It says I I anilum I I anilum I anilum. I have no idea what he's saying. I don't think he knows what he's saying. A troll just just bought you. <laughs> What? Are you kidding me? Hey, thanks for the super hearts, troll person. Turkey, thanks for joining. And thanks for the super hearts. I appreciate it. It's weird and odd, but I'll take it. Um, Omron Automation. What? <laughs> I know, somebody just gave me hearts, or gave me super hearts. It's crazy. Don't them them return them. I know. I don't know how to. Do I, do I know how to? I don't know if I know how to. Do I know how to return them? I think I gotta go on after the broadcast and return them. I can't don't think I can do it right now. They won't let me do it. Donate them. I wish I could donate them. I would donate them all to somebody else who can use them because I'll never be able to hit 185,000 hearts. <laughs> There's no way. Oh boy. Good night. Bessie! Mar uh, Malia, sorry. <laughs> Malia, thanks for joining. We've been trolled tonight. We had some Arabic thrown at us. We had all kinds of stuff. Yes, you just won prizes. <laughs> I know, right? How are you doing tonight? Hopefully, everybody's doing well. Uh, oh no, yeah, that's all right. So we got prayer down for uh, for a couple people tonight. Um, our friend Liz, other hip. 
I'm good. Getting a little tired. That someone on here was asking some questions about um about why why we should pray pray and and people who have uh who have suffered with um with cancer. You know why do we need hospitals if we have prayer and is prayer important? So I'm just told the person I'm a little little tired to explain that all tonight to come back tomorrow. Hey, no problem. Me too. I gotta get to sleep too. Let's get in there. Let's get in there. Um, guys, so, um, we're, we're gonna start shutting that down, I think. I'm getting a little, getting a little tired. Alright, guys, so, um, tonight we did some really good readings. Um, we read about Samson and Delilah, and then Samson's death. Right? That's a good question. I, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm just too tired to go another hour into explaining it. So I told the person to follow me and come back tomorrow and we'll talk about it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so hopefully they'll come back tomorrow because I, I'm interested in that. Um, you know, why do we get cancer? Why does God let, let us get cancer? Okay, cancer. And uh, and why does prayer work? I'm so sorry. I won't do that because you're probably all nasty, Harry. Okay, so goodness, that's just nasty. Red FX. Red FX. You're the guy. I'm gonna follow you. Come back there. Oh, so you're a coder and a part-time plumber. Awesome. Lost connection. I hear you. I'm only a little, little nasty and a little hairy. <laughs> and comical too. <laughs> uh, which is fine. All right, guys. So we're gonna start shutting this down. We're gonna, we're gonna do this tomorrow. We, we're gonna. Um, someone asked about why, why does God let us have. Uh, so why does God let us get cancer and things like that? You know, why do we need hospitals if we have prayer? So please, I really want to... I'm sorry. I'm a married man. And I'm not into that nasty. Um, so you can take your way on out. Thank you. Uh, I get really tired, but I can't go to bed yet. I just don't know why. Please pray for my anxiety and stress. Yes, Russell. Anxiety and stress. Personal problems. Absolutely. Oh, by the way, I'm an atheist. Oh, by the way, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining. All right. So um, it doesn't matter if you're atheist, Muslim, Jewish, Sikh, Hebrew, Israelite, uh, agnostic, atheist, whatever. You're all welcome here. I'm not going to kick you out unless you're a really jerk, you know. <laughs> you pray for me to be a Christian and not be gay. Um, that's kind of a big spectrum there, but uh, we can pray for you for, to, uh, for salvation. Yeah, absolutely we can. Jason helps me sleep, right? All right, so... Uh, if you're being authentic and true, and and uh, we'll definitely pray for you. No name. Um, all right. Oh, I almost fell asleep. In agreement, right? So here we go. All right. So Lord Heavenly Father, we uh, we lift up uh, we lift up uh, Russell today. Lord, we uh, we lift up Russell and um, for his anxiety and his stress today. Lord, we just uh, we know that there is a there is just a, a spirit around him that is causing him to uh, to be frustrated. Lord, and Lord, we just we speak to that. We we command it away. Lord, we uh, we ask that it be filled with a peace and love. Of you, your love, your peace, your 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 happiness. Everything that is you, Lord, let all those anxiety and stresses be be melted away and. And be filled with your love. 
Lord, and, and uh, we just ask that uh, for his personal things that are going on in his life, you know what's going on, Lord, and uh, we just ask that if it's your will, that it be uh, that it be uh, taken care of uh, by by you, Lord. We just ask this in your mighty, mighty son's name. Lord, um, we don't know if this person is going to be, is it, oh yeah, have helped reduce it, absolutely. Lord, we don't know if there's a person here, oh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> He's just being bad. I don't normally do this, but I'm agitated. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I just I couldn't deal with that no more. This is something that was like making my stomach turn. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> just couldn't deal with it. And I, I block two people on the broadcast tonight. I never block people. <laughs> yep, we're gonna get some rest. Um, so we prayed for everybody on our list. That's good. We got everybody on our list done today. And we got some uh, stuff to, to talk about tomorrow, so that's good. Um, yeah, if I missed you guys, um, just uh, send an email to me. We'll we'll pray for you. Um, I don't like to get, yeah, it was very disrespectful. People come and just act immature. Yeah, I know that's all right. I, I can normally put up with it, but that that's just uh, that's going borderline. You at, you ask for salvation, but then you turn around in one in one breath. Um, you know, just just be disrespectful. I don't need that. You know, you can go somewhere else. I'm not going to deal with it. Devil Lucifer has joined. You might want to stay away. We're speaking the word of Jesus Christ here. Speak of the name. We command you away. I know, right? Look at the name. <laughs> and, he, and he's running. He's probably on an Android device. I noticed that people that have an Apple device actually show up as being they say joined twice, and the people who have um, it's an egg drop, and the people who have an Android device only show up once, saying that they joined. So I find it interesting. That Apple uses two channels to connect. That's weird. So, the devil Lucifer is just here. We commanded him away. Obviously, he's not speaking. So, and now he's gone. <laughs> Be gone, <laughs> devil Lucifer on Android device. Yeah, we don't need that noise. All right, guys, let's do a nice little prayer, and let's walk on, rock on out. Uh, Lord, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for the app is coded. The way the app is coded for scope. Yep. Lord, we uh, we just uh, we we thank you for the time we had tonight to uh, spend with all of our friends, Lord, and all of our new friends. Anybody who has came on the broadcast that's heard the word of God tonight, Lord, we just, we thank you for those people who have come on the broadcast and be able to hear uh, just a little bit of the word. Lord, we uh, we appreciate every single person who's come on here and give give hearts and superstars and, and all these other things, Lord, we just, uh, yeah, even the trolls, we pray over them, Lord, and we just ask that you, uh, that, that you, uh, you, you, you write them and, and give them a, a direction that is more honoring to you rather than being, uh, um, you know, a uh, delusional and um, and disrespectful or we just ask that you that that you speak into their ear and give them uh, guidance or um, Lord we um, we lift up everyone that we prayed for tonight Lord we, we prayed for Kim and her grandson Riker we prayed for Hannah uh, for her friend Mike Mike uh, sweet and his salvation Lord we prayed for Cynthia joy for her workplace issues Lord we prayed for Kim or for uh, Liz for her hip and her leg Lord, we also prayed for uh, Russell and his uh, anxiety and depression, or anxiety and uh, and and things. Lord, we we also, uh, uh, you know what? I'm gonna do it anyways. Lord, we we pray for that uh, person who asked for salvation. Lord, we know that uh, sometimes we don't uh, we we overlook things, but Lord, I ask that you speak into his ear, that you give him a vision, give him a dream that that uh, that. It, that rocks his soul and makes him want to follow you instead of being a, a person who trolls people and, and is disrespectful, Lord. So we ask this in your mighty, mighty son's name. We pray. Yes, Father, absolutely. Lord, uh, I, I just ask that everybody get some, some rest tonight, Lord, and let them be able to wake up tomorrow refreshed and renewed and, um, and just awaken and have a beautiful day um, that, is, uh, that is honoring to you. Lord, we ask this in your mighty son's name. Amen. Hey, no problem. I'm gonna pray for you anytime. You know that. You know that. That's what we do. We, you know, I, I, I was really believe that God has brought me 
into position to be able to pray for people. He set me up to do this, so I want to do this. I want to be obedient. He hasn't told me to stop doing it, so something must be working. It's not about me. All those hearts, all those invites and follows and shares and all that stuff, that's not for me. It's not for me at all. So for, it's for Jesus. And just remember that. I don't want this ever to be about me. You know, um, I'm just going to be the, the voice, right? I'm going to be the messenger, the one who says, who, who speaks the word of God, who reads it and speaks the word of God, and try to interpret it and make it easy and simpler for people to understand. Instead of big churchy words that just confuse people and push them away. So I, I hope that I'm doing a good, I, I hope I'm doing God, um, I hope I'm doing doing right by God, by by the way I'm talking, the way I'm way I'm presenting things. So, guys, uh, thank you for joining me on my journey from Genesis to Revelation, one chapter at a time. I appreciate every single one of you guys. I um, I just thank you. I thank you. I thank you for being here and keeping me obedient to be able to read my Bible every day, and to do the devotional and really bring me closer. And I try to be. I really do. There's no other way. There really is no other way but to be genuine. Every other way you're lying. You know, it's just not not worth it. Why be fake? It takes too much work to be fake. It's pretty easy to be real. And um, once you get over the barrier of uh, getting it over yourself, that's when stuff is there. I love you guys too, and I appreciate you guys. I really do. I try to be. I try to be. All right, guys, you have a very nice night. Get some rest. We'll see you tomorrow. We're going to do it up, do some more uh, readings. We're going to do some more uh, teaching, some more stuff there. Yes, Hannah, thank you for joining. Um, guys, if uh, if you are ever in the Buffalo area, send me an email. Let me know you're here. Um, we'll go get grab a coffee, and we'll uh, we'll do a little short little scope broadcast, you know. And I uh, like to get to know people outside of just uh, the face on Periscope, you know. So if you're ever in the area, let me know. Hit me up. All right, guys, get some rest. We'll see you tomorrow. Um, have a nice night. And uh, just remember, be blessed. I'm in western New York, so like Buffalo area.